Aircraft manufacturing is an important industrial sector in Russia, employing around 355,300 people. The dissolution of the Soviet Union led to a deep crisis for the industry, especially for the civilian aircraft segment. The situation started improving during the middle of the first decade of the 2000s due to growth in air transportation and increasing demand. A consolidation program launched in 2005 led to the creation of the United Aircraft Corporation Holding Company, which includes most of the industry's key companies. The Russian aircraft industry offers a portfolio of internationally competitive military aircraft such as MiG-29 and Su-27, while new projects such as the Sukhoi Superjet 100 are hoped to revive the fortunes of the civilian aircraft segment. In 2009, companies belonging to the United Aircraft Corporation delivered 95 new fixed-wing aircraft to its customers, including 15 civilian models. In addition, the industry produced over 141 helicopters. History First World War Russia had 24 aircraft manufacturers at the outbreak of war, but they did not have the materials or the capacity to replace the aircraft that were lost. In particular they were dependent on foreign engines. It produced 1893 aircraft and imported 883 from 1914 to 1916, but it only produced 920 engines in this period while importing 2,326. Production declined sharply after the February Revolution and had virtually ceased when Russia left the war in 1918. Without question most famous aircraft produced during this period has been Sikorsky Ilya Muromet's first four-engine bomber to equip a dedicated strategic bombing unit. This heavy bomber was unrivaled in the early stages of the war, as the Central Powers had no aircraft capable enough to rival it until much later. During World War I Russia has lost to enemy action only one Sikorsky Ilya Muromets in more than 400 sorties. <laughs> Second World War <laughs> Soviet era In the Soviet planned economic system, free market competition between companies was seen as wasteful, instead the Soviet system was a multi-tiered system the chief components of which were design bureaus, known as OKBs, and manufacturing complexes. The OKBs did not possess the means to mass produce manufacture aircraft nor were they intended to, nor were the manufacturing complexes able to design aircraft or tied to individual OKBs instead they would produce whichever aircraft were assigned to them. Operational requirements for proposed aircraft were created by the Soviet Air Forces to which individual OKBs would create a design informed by state research institutes, which would provide them with information on aerodynamics and available systems, because they were designed to similar requirements and research input, competing designs were very often very similar in appearance. These competing designs would then be evaluated against each other and a winner chosen. Ideally a single winning design would be chosen which would then be assigned to one or more manufacturing complexes. Most such complexes were within the Soviet Union, however some product lines were assigned to allies within the Warsaw Pact. Due in part to political considerations the assignment of production was widely dispersed, creating supply chains in which the role of state planning was paramount. 
When exported a third tier existed in the state-run export companies, neither design bureaus nor manufacturing companies were directly responsible for the marketing of their products overseas, nor did they directly benefit from the sale of their products, instead design and production units were allocated those resources deemed necessary to meet centrally determined production targets. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, Warsaw Pact and Cumcon there came a disconnect between end-users, export companies, OKBs, assembly plants and component manufacturers some of which now resided in newly independent and sometimes hostile nations. Russia also found that entire segments of its aviation requirements now lay in these foreign countries, for example the manufacture of jet training aircraft had been assigned to Czechoslovakia, while Poland got light helicopters and crop dusting airplanes, Romania did also manufacture light helicopters, the majority of its tactical airlifter design capability in the form of the Antonov OKB was now in Ukraine, and the main assembly plant for the Sukhoi Su-25 ground attack aircraft was in Georgia. <inaudible> Post-Soviet adjustments Aerospace was a well-developed industry in the Soviet Union. In late 1980s, the Soviet Union accounted for 25% of the worldwide civilian and 40% of the worldwide military aircraft production. The consequences of the Soviet Union's dissolution in 1991 were however catastrophic. The whole manufacturing sector was devastated by imports, while the aerospace and automobile industries barely managed to survive under highly protective tariffs. On the positive side, the military aircraft industry managed to benefit from improving export possibilities. It profited from a large stock of components and parts which had been produced during Soviet times. The civilian aircraft industry fared much worse, while in 1990, the country had produced 715 civilian aircraft, by 1998 the number had dropped to 54 and in 2000 only four civilian aircraft were produced, as the industry structure was deeply fractionalized, the consensus was that consolidation was necessary. For this purpose, President Boris Yeltsin created the VPK MAPO Military Industrial Complex, Moscow Aircraft Production Association, which included some key companies such as Mikoyan. MAPO later became the Russian Aircraft Company RAC MIG. This stage of consolidation was however not very successful, and MAPO was later merged with Sukhoi. The aerospace industry's total output in 2000 was $2.7 billion, with a net profit of $600 million. Exports of military aircraft in 2000 amounted to $1.3 billion. Topic. 2000–2005, start of a recovery At the turn of the millennium, the civilian aircraft industry was in a massive financial crisis. Only a few aircraft were built and after sail maintenance was minuscule. Many planes, both new and old, failed to receive international safety and environmental certifications. Two key companies, Aviasta SP and Voronezh Aircraft Production Association were almost bankrupt. The profits of the civilian aircraft industry totaled just $300 million in 2001. However, in August 2000, the situation started improving considerably. In 2001, the industry finally started receiving new orders from leasing companies. Air transportation grew about 8% a year, and by 2004 domestic demand for new aircraft was soaring. Key companies managed to pay their debts or get them restructured, and production levels were increasing again. The military aircraft industry survived the 15 years of crisis almost exclusively through exports. 
Only in 2005 did the industry start to receive substantial financing from the state budget. Topic: 2005 to 2010 Industry Consolidation Program. In 2005, the government under President Vladimir Putin initiated an industry consolidation program to bring the main aircraft producing companies under a single umbrella organization, the United Aircraft Corporation The aim was optimize production lines and minimize losses. The program was divided in three parts: reorganization and crisis management (2007 to 2010), evolution of existing projects (2010 to 2015), and further progress within the newly created structure (2015 to 2025). The UAC, one of the so-called national champions and comparable to EADS in Europe, enjoyed considerable financial support from the Russian government and injected money to the companies it had acquired to improve their financial standing. The UAC's first budget in 2007, was about 2 billion rubles, and next year it increased to 24 billion rubles about $770 million. The deliveries of civilian aircraft increased to six in 2005, and in 2009 the industry delivered 15 civilian aircraft, worth 12.5 billion rubles, mostly to domestic customers. Despite the global financial crisis, Russia's aircraft manufacturing industry as a whole managed to increase production and sales by 19.5% in 2009. topic new projects topic <laughs> <laughs> fifth generation fighter In 1998, the Russian Air Force asked the industry to develop a light multi-role frontline aircraft. In 2001, the requirements were upgraded to a multi-role frontline aircraft system, which later became the fifth-generation fighter Sukhoi Su-57, regarded as Russia's response to the American Joint Strike Fighter. The Su-57 performed its maiden flight in 2010, breaking America's complete monopoly on the development and production of fifth-generation jets. Moscow Defense Brief hailed it as a major coup for the Russian aerospace industry, saying that, "...while not America's equal militarily, Russia is still a solid second in terms of defense technology, outranking both Western Europe and China and punching well above its economic weight." Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin has announced that government will increase financing of Russian defense industry complex. <laughs> Sukhoi Superjet 100 The Sukhoi Superjet 100 regional airliner is the first major Russian civilian aircraft whose development was started after 1991. The plane, which first flew in 2008, has been described as the most important and successful civil aircraft program of the Russian aerospace industry. Designed by the United Aircraft Corporation subsidiary Sukhoi in cooperation with foreign partners, all versions of the plane are assembled by Komsomolsh on Amur Aircraft Production Association in the Russian Far East, while Novosibirsk Aircraft Production Association focuses on component production. The two companies have been heavily investing in upgrading of their facilities, and are expected to produce 70 airframes by 2012. Irkut <inaudible> <inaudible> MC-21 Development of the Irkut MC-21 passenger aircraft was begun in the early 2000s. 
The aircraft, which has a passenger capacity of 150 to 200 and a range of 5,000 km, is being designed by Irkut Corporation in cooperation with foreign partners. It is targeted at the most popular segment of the domestic airline industry, and is intended to replace older planes such as the Tupolev Tu-154. The program is in the production phase. The MC-21 certification and delivery was initially planned by 2016, but delivery was delayed to 2017. The developers aim to sell 1,200 to 1,500 planes in total, amounting to a 12 to 15 percent share of the international market. Topic: Other projects. Other new aircraft developed in recent times include the Yak-130 Advanced Trainer and Light Attack Jet, the modernized Tu-204SM and the Ukrainian AN-148 regional aircraft, which was mostly manufactured in Voronezh prior to worsening Ukrainian-Russian relations. Seaplane manufacturer Berev is also designing several new passenger aircraft. Topic. Structure In 2008, the aircraft industry consisted of 106 enterprises, 18 of which belonged to the United Aircraft Corporation. One of the most successful companies is Sukhoi, which possesses a wide portfolio of internationally competitive military aircraft, including the Su-27, Su-30 and Su-35 models. On the civilian segment, the company's most important project is the Superjet 100. Komsomolsh on Amur Aircraft Production Association, Russia's largest aircraft enterprise, is responsible for manufacturing Sukhoi products. Joint stock company Tupolev focuses on the civil aviation market with its Tu-204 and Tu-214 planes, but is also responsible for the long-range bomber Tu-160 and for developing its successes. Mass production of Tu-204 planes is accomplished by Aviasta SP, located in Ulyanovske, while the Tu-214 variant is produced by Kazan Aircraft Production Association. Aleutian focuses on the military cargo and transport sector. Irkut has a portfolio of trainer and amphibious aircraft projects and competes in the onboard electronics and avionics niche. In the unmanned aerial vehicle segment, Zala Aero and Vega Radio Engineering Corporation are among the leading companies. Topic: <laughs> Scientific Institutions. Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute, Gromov Flight Research Institute. Baranov Central Institute of Aviation Motor Development All-Russian Institute of Aviation Materials State Scientific Research Institute of Aviation Systems Production Civilian aircraft production until 2013 Topic Military aircraft On the military segment companies belonging to UAC delivered 84 new aircraft and knockdown kits Over 60 aircraft were modernized or underwent overhaul Topic: Helicopters. Topic: Revenue. 
The aircraft industry's revenue from sales in 2008 was 226.6 billion rubles, 105.3 billion for UAC, and the export share was 29%, 52.5% for UAC. Topic: Economic significance. Russia's aircraft industry is one of the backbone branches of the country's economy. It is one of the most science-intensive high-tech sectors and employs the largest number of skilled personnel. The production and value of the military aircraft branch far outstrips other defense industry sectors, and aircraft products make up more than half of the country's arms exports. topic employment In 2008 the number of personnel estimated to be working for the aircraft industry was 355,300 The United Aircraft Corporation holding which encompasses most of the industry's key companies had 97,500 employees in 2009 of this amount, 85,500 worked in production at factories, 11,100 worked in the design bureaus and 900 in management and leasing companies. The average age of UAC personnel working in production was 44 years, and 49 for the personnel working in the design bureaus. The ratio of higher education graduates was 34%. See also Glossary of Russian and USSR aviation acronyms List of Russian aerospace engineers Space industry of Russia RS-26 Rubezh 3M22 Zircon <laughs>